everyone. Our today's topic is hypothalamus and pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is also called as hypophysis. Now, what is hypothalamus? First, we will see. Hypothalamus is the part of our brain, human brain. Okay, we have studied diencephalon. So, hypothalamus, it is the floor of diencephalon that we have studied. What is pituitary gland? Pituitary gland, it is the smallest endocrine gland. Okay, so first we will see the external structure of hypothalamus and then we will see or study external structure of pituitary gland. Here, hypothalamus, so this is the structure of hypothalamus. This is pituitary gland. Pituitary gland, it is present at the base of hypothalamus or it is attached to hypothalamus. Okay. It is a link. Now who is linking which part? Hypothalamus, it link with pituitary gland. It means the nervous system, it is linked with endocrine system because Hypothalamus is the part of nervous system and pituitary gland as it is an endocrine gland, it is the part of endocrine system. Okay, so this nervous system, it is connected with endocrine system. Okay, location of hypothalamus, as I told that hypothalamus, it is present in the brain and it is the part of diencephalon. The function of hypothalamus is, as hypothalamus, it is the part of brain. This hypothalamus, it consists of the neurons. These neurons, now these neurons, these are the cyton and these are the axons. These neurons, they secrete certain chemicals and these chemicals are called as Neurohormones. Now why they are called as neurohormones? Neuro means nerve cell. As these chemicals, they are secreted by these nerve cells, they are called as neurohormones. They act as a messenger also. Now these neurohormones are of two categories. One is called as releasing factor and another category is called as inhibiting factor. Now the detail of this we will study later on. Okay. Let us study the function of hypothalamus. As hypothalamus it is one of the important part of nervous system. It plays important role in homeostasis. Now what is homeostasis? Homeostasis it is the maintenance of Internal environment, our body's internal environment, in spite of change in external environment. Okay, the example is in case of winter season, the external temperature it goes down, it goes till 7 degree or 6 degree, but our body temperature it remains constant that is 37 degree centigrade. This is one of the example. Overall, the environment, internal environment, okay, it is uh, controlled by the hypothalamus. This is first function. Second function, as I told, this hypothalamus, it secretes uh, releasing factor, inhibiting factor. These factors, they are released in the blood and they are coming in the pituitary gland. This is a pituitary gland. Okay, so this hypothalamus, it controls the pituitary gland so that or in other word you can say the neurohormones, they are secreted, they reaches the pituitary gland so that pituitary gland become active and start secreting its own hormone. Okay, so this is all about hypothalamus. Now come to pituitary gland. Pituitary gland is also called as hypophysis. This is another name of pituitary gland. It is one of the smallest endocrine gland 
and this gland is called as master gland okay why it is called as master gland details we'll study later on the if you see the size of this gland it is like a grain of the pea means it is very very small and approximately its weight is 1 gram means it's a very small uh, weight endocrine gland in our body location it is present at the base of hypothalamus okay now where exactly this pituitary gland is secreted sorry situated as it is the location is in the brain only okay one saddle like depression is present saddle like depression that depression is called as cella tersica this depression is called as cella tersica and this depression is present in one bone and that bone is called as sphenoid bone okay means sphenoid we have many bones one of the bone is sphenoid bone this sphenoid bone is having saddle like depression okay this depression is called as cella tersica and this pituitary gland is situated means here exactly this is the location of pituitary gland okay broadly this pituitary gland is divided into two parts anterior lobe posterior lobe anterior lobe is called as adenohypophysis posterior lobe is called as neurohypophysis we will study now the anatomy of pituitary gland or you can say internal structure of pituitary gland this is pituitary gland and this part is called as hypothalamus pituitary gland it is present at the base of hypothalamus and how hypothalamus it is a link in between nervous system and endocrine system we have studied okay so let us study pituitary gland in detail broadly this pituitary gland is divided into two parts this part is called as adenohypophysis why hypophysis because pituitary gland is also called as hypophysis okay adenohypophysis is also called as anterior lobe this part is called as neurohypophysis neurohypophysis is also called as posterior lobe now let us come to these words if you see this adeno adeno means the glandular structure when zygote it develops into embryo okay embryo is having buccal cavity so the roof of buccal cavity it enlarges and it forms a pouch that pouch like outgrowth is nothing but this pituitary gland this pouch is also called as ratke's pouch now come to neurohypophysis here the word is written neuro means what it consists of neural part only this posterior pituitary actually it is the extension of hypothalamus okay is it clear i think it is clear uh, to you so anterior lobe posterior lobe now we will come to the parts first adenohypophysis it consists of three parts pars tuberalis the tube like structure pars intermedia now what is intermedia these two lobes or in between these two lobe one small structure rudimentary structure is present which is called as pars intermedia which is attached to the adenohypophysis okay and the major portion the big portion which covers 70% of adenohypophysis is called as pars distalis okay so these three are the parts of adenohypophysis now come to neurohypophysis neurohypophysis again it consists of three parts this 
a solar like structure of hypothalamus okay which is the part of brain also is called as median eminence the stalk like structure is called as infundibulum and the enlarged structure is called as pars nervosa it means the neurohypophysis it consists of again three parts adenohypophysis it consists of three parts okay now come to hypothalamus as we have studied hypothalamus consists of neurosecretory cells which secrete neurohormones correct now these neurohormones they are coming in how they travel let us see first we will study in adenohypophysis and then we will study in neurohypophysis now here you can see the blood vessel it is called as hypophysial artery why hypophysial artery because this artery carries pure blood to hypophysis means pituitary gland this artery divides redivides into fine branches this branch is called as capillary network okay in this capillary network the neurohormones they are added this neurohormones may be releasing factors or inhibiting factors okay now these capillary again it unite and here when they enter in pars distalis again they form a capillary network okay now these neurohormones they are carried again they are released in adenohypophysis okay they stimulate this adenohypophysis so that this adenohypophysis starts secreting its own hormone now these hormones they are added in this blood capillary and through this vein they are released in the blood stream okay so here you can see two network of capillaries are present or you can say two beds are present which are made up of capillaries here this is one bed of capillary here another bed of capillary okay now such type of system is called as portal system this system is called as hypophysial portal system what is hypophysial portal system this system it is very short which consists of two beds of network of capillary before entering into the heart so this is about the adenohypophysis now come to neurohypophysis neurohypophysis in case of neurohypophysis here the neurohormones now two neurohormones one is called as adh another is called as oxytocin they are secreted synthesized and secreted from this part this part means hypothalamus part only okay these are the neurons and this long part is the axon so these two hormones they are carried by axon and they are released here here means in neurohypophysis which part of neurohypophysis pars nervosa it means this adh and oxytocin adh and oxytocin they are produced here they are carried from hypothalamus from hypothalamus they are entering in pars nervosa or you can say neurohypophysis they are stored the thing you will have to remember these two hormones they are not synthesized in neurohypophysis the place of neurohypophysis they just store these two hormones and as per the requirement of the body they are released in the blood stream